Hello, welcome to Gospel in Action. In this video, we will try to answer life's challenging questions on who are we? Why are we here? What is our purpose? And where will we go based on what Jesus has taught us? This is going to be an incredible video. These are the questions I'm sure every one of you who are watching this video will surely have. Let me tell you that this video is not made out of my pride that I know everything. Even I am learning like all of you. I just want to present it to you from a place of humility and from what God has already revealed to me through the word of God and by the spirit of God. So please keep that in mind. All of you already know that one of the main roles of the Holy Spirit is to explain the word of God. So God Bless you. Let us now get to the video. If you are a first time visitor, then I request you to please hit that like button to support us with this mission. If the videos are helpful, please subscribe to this channel to not miss another video. We have been learning about Jesus in this video series of John chapter 7. So this topical video is an extension to it. That is how I generally do topical videos. So let us begin to understand who are we, what is our purpose, and where are we going after death from what Jesus is teaching us through his message. There should be something about Jesus that should strike all of us in who he was, what he was doing, and where he was going. Why? Because Jesus spoke incredibly boldly about who he was. Jesus had no confusion at all and he spoke with tremendous confidence. Now, with that in mind, think about us, the human beings. There are undoubtedly innumerable number of people in all cultures and all nations who genuinely struggle with these questions on who am I, where do I come from, what is my purpose in life, and where am I going after death. So, what do they do about those thoughts in general? In fact, there is this crazy idea which belongs to this evil world that people often use. That is, they need to go somewhere to some physical place or even an imaginary place in their minds to find themselves. We have also discussed about this idea a little bit in our Hinduism series. This idea of finding themselves indeed came from the Eastern thought. Yes, it is in fact a mystical thought and unfortunately it is being spread in the Western world as well very rapidly. These people think that they can find themselves by going deep within themselves. However, the sad news is that they will not only not find their purpose, but also find incredible amount of filth within them. This is because the heart is deceitful and desperately wicked, according to Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 9. All human beings who are born from an egg and a sperm are all born with the sin nature within them, according to the Bible. There is no way around it except one. The only way out is through faith in Jesus Christ. So people, please understand, we are never going to find out who we are and what our purpose on earth is if we keep on staring at our own selves. We are never going to find that out by looking within. It is never going to happen because that is not how we the human beings are designed. Please understand, we are designed to find and surrender ourselves to the God of the universe who created us and who is outside of us, not within us. He will come inside of us and dwell with us once we make that conscious decision to invite and allow him into our lives. We have also seen this earlier in the Hinduism series that I made. The verse is Revelation chapter 3 and verse 20, where Jesus says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. 
If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and eat with him and he with me. In other words, we would know everything about who we are, where we came from, what is our purpose in life, and where do we go after death. Not by looking towards self, but by looking towards Jesus Christ. Why? Because Jesus knew perfectly where he came from and who he was and where he was going without an iota of doubt or confusion. And so we are also going to understand all those details for our lives as we look toward Jesus. Jesus showed us the way. In fact, he is the way. He only asked us one thing. He asked us to deny ourselves, take up the cross daily and follow him. How many of us are actively doing that? If you're already doing that and are on the right path, then there should be no question in your minds on what should be your goal toward which we all walk together. We walk with Jesus as guided by the Holy Spirit towards that goal, which is fully focused on the expansion of the kingdom of heaven on earth, which is the same as the Great Commission, that is to preach the good news to every person on the planet and make them Jesus' disciples by baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. As said in Matthew chapter 28 and verse 19, Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 15, that Jesus died for all, that those who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who for their sake died and was raised. This is incredible and mind-blowing to know that Bible actually says that, right? In fact, this verse 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 15 is one of my favorite verses in the whole Bible because there is indescribable amount of freedom in it. We will learn about this freedom in the next video. On the other hand, if we push God aside, Jesus aside, our families aside, our friends aside and become ascetics in search of finding ourselves, we would become the most depressed people the world will ever see. So I would never do that. I pray that even your eyes be opened and that you should never follow that path that Hinduism or that Eastern thought prescribes. If you notice one thing about Gautama Buddha, he was the most depressed person the world has ever seen. That is why he preached a philosophy that has no soul and no hope in it. He preached that salvation is nothing but nirvana, which is nothing but eternal death, not eternal life. How depressing is that? In that path, the deception is so great that you would think you have found your peace. But in God's reality, you would have, in fact, lost everything, which includes your purpose, your life, and even your soul. That's when you get eternal death. So please do not fall into such dangerous traps and incredible subtle deceptions by the master deceiver, Satan. He, the enemy, wants to see your end, your ultimate and eternal destruction. So forget about looking towards yourselves, but look only toward Jesus Christ, who came to not only save us from all eternal destruction, but also make us righteous to live with our Creator forever and ever. So let us put our focus on Jesus Christ and yield ourselves by being obedient to the Spirit of God. We could only be obedient to Jesus Christ when we first accept Him and love Him for who He is. Jesus said in John chapter 14 and verse 15 that if we love Him, we will keep His commandments. Only then we will figure out everything we need to know about ourselves on who we are, why we are here, 
and where we will go. Now, let me tell you what I understood about who I am, what is my purpose, and where will I go after my death so that you who do not understand any of it may follow me as I follow Christ. God is incredibly amazing. He is beyond all our imaginations put together. In my personal belief, whatever God had to create, he created in the first six days, according to the very first chapter of the Bible. Since then, he put everything into play. So who am I? God put everything that I am when he created Adam in his own likeness in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26. How did God create Adam, the first man? Genesis chapter 2 and verse 7 says, the Lord God formed man of dust from the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and the man became a living creature. So even I was created out of the dust from the earth and by the breath of God because I am none other than Adam's descendant. In fact, every single person on this planet is born like that. But yet each one of us are unique because we are born out of specific unions of living sperms and living eggs, which in turn created us into unique lives. So, as most Christians think, I did not exist as a single soul before the creation of the world. But life in me took shape from the existing lives of a specific sperm and a specific egg, right when I became an embryo and I became a unique life. But God is omniscient. He knew all along that that specific combination of a sperm and an egg will take shape into me, a unique me. That is who I am. And God knew me when he created the first man, Adam. That gives me comfort because God had a relationship with me from back then. That is from the first man. So now, what is my purpose? Why did God allow that incredible orchestration to happen and allowed me to take birth? God does not allow or do anything randomly. There are no accidents in what God does. I am hence not an accident. I was not born because a random sperm and a random egg met. No, there is a specific purpose. And I am glad that I understand that purpose. The purpose of my life is to find out who am I, who created me. And now that I have found that out, I dedicate my life to my creator to share that truth with every single person on the planet. Because everyone needs to know who their creator is and how to tap life out of him, who is the source of life itself. So all I'm going to do is to glorify my creator in everything I do. God pointed all humanity towards Jesus and Jesus is the one who revealed who God is and what his character is to us. Jesus said, whoever has seen me has seen the father. In John chapter 14 and verse 9, this is just one of the many proofs that Jesus himself is God. So, as I said earlier, whoever finds their true purpose will no longer live for themselves, but for Jesus, who for their sake died and was raised. So, even my purpose is to no longer live life for myself, but live For Jesus alone, who gave me the great commission to preach the gospel to every person and to make them his disciples. Now, where am I going? Jesus promised to us in John chapter 2 and verse 3 that he was going to prepare a place for us and that he would come again to take us there so that we may be where he is. We will also see him face to face. 
and have full knowledge of everything as mentioned in 1st Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 12. That is the same place where death shall be no more, neither shall be mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore. According to Revelation chapter 21 and verse 4, I am having tremendous hope right now as I live, knowing where I will go later. I can't express that feeling in words. I'm going to live eternally forever with my Creator. It gives me tremendous confidence in carrying forward God's will for my life in this life on earth. That should be everyone's hope, not just mine. Thus, I desire to give that hope to everyone on this planet just as God desires. Do you notice something here? God's desire has become my desire. And as a part of that, I am making this video and all the videos that I have ever made. So God bless you all. In the next video, let us talk about freedom in Christ. Until then, stay tuned to Gospel in Action. And to know more about me, please find my testimony and my contact details in the description below. Thank you so much for watching.